I'd like to call this board meeting to order for March 9th. Um, roll call, please. Mr. Ballard? Here. Ms. Nazario? Here. Ms. Johnson? Here. Mr. Sturgill? Here. Mr. Williams? Late. <laughs> <laughs> the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next on the list is recognition of visitors. Not public hearing, yes, yet, Miss Marge, but we miss you. Good to have you back. <laughs> and um, so we do have a presentation to start off. Um, and this presentation is going to be from Ms. Sandra Pelliquin. And so before I call her to the podium, I would like to kind of give you some background of some of the great things that are going on with some of our leaders in our community. So a little background. The, the organization is called Uni, Unidos US. Did I get it right? Unidos, Unidos US, um, which is the formal uh, La Raza. <coughs> it is the largest national Latino civil rights and advocacy organization in the United States. The National Institute for Latino Leaders helped bridge a current gap in the policy arena by infusing the voice of school leaders working with and on behalf of Latino students. This group assists school leaders to bridge the divide between policy and practice. They provide leaders with the tools that they need to shape the education reform debate by including a Latino perspective, advocate for policies and reform efforts that render increased education outcomes for Latino and English learner students, educate decision makers and influence national policy to shape effective accountability measures geared at Latino and EL students. This past week, Sandra engaged in advocacy process by focusing on educational issues that are affecting our Lorraine community and school system. Sandra, Sandra accompanied uh, a group of fellows on the Hill and led the conversation with legislative staffers in advocacy for their prospective communities. During her visit, Sandra addressed the immediate effects the <coughs> President's proposed $6.1 billion cut to educational funding and what that effect would have on Lorraine students and, the effect, and its effect on immigration enforcement is having in our classrooms. Sandra has done much of this work at the state level and on behalf of Lorraine City Schools and now has elevated her voice to a national stage. So what we have is a certificate of, of recognition from Ms. Sandra Pelliquin. So uh, first of all, we want to give her a hand for that, please. And I would like her to take a, a, a stand here at the podium and kind of explain briefly on you know, some of the things that are going on with her organization and all the great stuff she's doing for our kids. Thank you. Yeah, Unidos U.S. is the largest advocacy group, and they want to empower Latino leaders and um, to be the voice. This past week, a report came out about the social emotional learning of Latino students, especially our ELs, especially since 90% of our ELs are born here and documented. However, with the stress, and I feel that they suffer PTSD, and I, ha I know students here who suffer this elementary level, junior high, and high school. It's not just a high school level um, emotional problem. Uh, day after day, week after week, year after year, being worried when if you come home, if your family members are going to be there or they'll be gone. And it's a huge stressor. So um, I was able to share about that this week on the Hill and give testimony. Um, it was quite an honor. I felt um, my ancestors were with me, and it was really emotional and um, very cool that I was able to give that testimony. Uh -huh. And then we were able to meet with congressional leaders, and they really teach us how to lobby and get that in there. So it was very empowering. Outstanding. We were very proud of you. Anything from anyone else? So we would like to take a picture with you as we give you your award. Thank you. Can we all kind of, I'm sorry. I've got some new designers here, so you guys are going to tell me where I need to be. So Mr. Bach. Mr. Yeah, and thank you, Ms. Pelequin, for all you do. Thank, thank you so you. much. We have our first hearing of the public. Is there anything from the public? Good. 
Marge Walker, 2955 Lexington. Haven't been here for a long time. Uh, anyways, I still have the same complaint as I had before. Why do kids have to keep continuing to come to school at 7 or 7.25 and uh, get breakfast in the morning? I can understand the breakfast. We just got started with having the daylight when they were coming in the morning. We have a change back, and they're still getting to school in the dark. And now related to that, uh, with the census that's going to be coming, and wondering how are these kids um, going to be counted? Because I'm sure that many of them <coughs> don't have regular residence, and maybe even sleep in cars with their parents if they have it so bad. They may have it so bad that they can't make it to school earlier either. Um, so I'm just wondering how that's going to be settled. Also, um, the I want to give credit to what I read in the paper about all the action and all the good that the Boys and Girls Club uh, do with the education of the students uh, uh, after school hours and with the STEM program that they do. I guess that's a short and brief. <laughs> so I will add to the census question. I know the community is working really, really hard to make sure that everyone is counted. So there's several active groups here in the community. I'm a part of some of those where we're trying to find make sure that every stone's unturned as we are discovering the people that live here in our community. So, but thank you for bringing that up. Thank you. Anyone else from the public? Speaking of Boys and Girls Club, are they coming back? We'll wait for Greg on that answer. Will he be here? <laughs> he won't be here this evening, but I'll ask that question for all seriousness, I will ask. Um, okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. If I could. Please, sir. Um, the question about early schoolers or late school start has come up, of course, quite a number of times. Um, and I know there's a lot of um, mixed um, perspectives on that. It would be interesting, perhaps, if we could maybe, um, I don't know who would do it. Um, Greg could probably assign someone to. Uh, just get us some information, some data around um, different school times. I know there's lots of talk about um, about the number of hours that high school students get to sleep um, and how they contribute to other health issues, diabetes, uh, obesity, a lot of things which are really not necessarily something that we would think of in the context of, of sleeping and everything. Um, and I know that there are lots of logistic reasons why we do it um, in terms of transportation, in terms of the number of instructional hours. Um, but it'd be interesting just to find out um, what some of the research is around that and what some of the other um, best practices are around for districts who do it and districts who don't do it. I think it would be, I don't know that we could ever change, but at least it would be nice to know what the disadvantages and advantages are. Um, and again, like anything else, if there were enough advantages that weighed in, it would cause us to at least um, look at that. And again, I don't know if logistically if we could do anything around it, but I think it would be a good idea for us to at least gather that information. And then at least the decisions that we're making, um, we'd be able to look at them from a maybe health and development perspective as well as a logistical thing that drives a lot of the decisions that we make. So okay. if that's possible through the chair, if we could get a little bit of information around that, it'd be helpful. Okay, I will follow up on that. I have statistics at home from in the newspapers from all around the country that they have had uh, uh, statistics of where the kids, when they go to school so early, they are troublemakers, they fall asleep in class, and it's, this is just not local, it is throughout the country. And then they fall asleep, they get agitated, and they also cause fights. I mean, I'm just saying, if you want statistics, they're, they're there already in the newspapers. There was also a law that was just recently what? being discussed. There was a law that was recently being discussed a house bill. I did see that. <clears throat> so we will follow up on that. Is there anything else from the public, please? You have anything? You have any updates, Ruben? Please. Good evening, everyone. Um, 
So drill tomorrow, we are having a drill. I'd like to make sure that um, the community is aware of that. Um, it is a safety drill, an effort to um, make a safer environment here at the high school. There will be multiple agencies. I know we had the Chronicle and the Morning Journal have also shared it. Um, but the goal is to make sure that we start doing this before the weather breaks, um, to, to get a presence out <coughs> in the building um, and a presence out in the community. Also, um, just with the immigration issues, too, I've been trying to field some of those concerns and talk to families um, that have kind of approached me, and we've gotten some um, feedback. So I'm trying to be out there um, and, and give as much information as I can. Um, but with the drill tomorrow, we are going to work with the police department. It is kind of their um, show, so we kind of follow their directives. Um, so we're trying to make it as quick as we can tomorrow. So I did send an email out to the Lorraine High staff today because as of like 2 o'clock, they hadn't got an update, and, and we sent it out um, to kind of give them time frame and what's going to be required and then tomorrow morning we'll give them more of a um, solid information as what to do during the um, drill when it's over um, so that we can keep <coughs> moving into the next school year. So the drill is more of a benefit for our local safety officers who would know how to work together in a process like that and is that why you guys chose to do it during a professional development day versus? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's going to give the um, police officers and first responders, because remember we're not just having police show up, so we're going to have EMS workers, um, some of the hospital workers to kind of share that side of injuries or what would be required for safety and then giving them the other aspect of we're not just locking down. So remember, when we do drills in the school, we usually do a lockdown drill to teach everyone the worst case scenario, to say, hey, um, you know, go into a room. Tomorrow we're gonna add in the evacuation piece to say, look, if you can get out of the building, get out of the building, giving teachers kind of that next step of, okay, I have to run um, and get out so that they can bring it to the kids. Because we don't want complete chaos when we do it with the students here. I mean, you're talking about 2,000 students. We want to make sure if the teachers understand the process and the safety, then when I present it to the students, I think they'll be more comfortable in what they do because they're going to understand and the teachers will know, hey, yes, but, you know, because they'll say, well, we were told to lock down. No, we only lock down in this situation. Let's go, kids. And then they can direct them to what to really do and once you're outside unfortunately it's supposed to be raining so we're going to adjust according to the weather but once they're outside giving them the safety the next piece of what we need to do if ever god forbid something were to happen we would be better prepared with um dealing with that let's stand okay thank All you right, thank you <coughs> anything else from anyone nothing else from the public Need to approve the minutes from the March 3rd, 2020 special meeting. Motion. Second. It's been motion supported. Roll call, please. Uh, Mr. Williams? Yes. Ms. Cesario? Yes. Mr. Ballard? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Sturgill? Yes. Is there any old business? Hearing none, we have no recommendations or updates from the CEO. Do we have anything from the treasurer? No, not at this time. Not at this time. Is there any new business? Yes, sir. <clears throat> I think part of, um, from our private discussions, one of the things that we wanted to discuss at tonight's meeting was we know we have some um, upcoming renewal levies. <coughs> and we we're hoping that we could get some, start some conversation around what that looks like. We know we just, thanks to the community, passed a renewal. Um, but I think the next renewal was, um, and Bill would remember better, at some time before we were on the board, there was some kind of a house bill or something that allowed us to combine renewals into one. So we know that renewal piece is coming up, as well as we know based on our finances, we are going to be in need of a new money initiative. So for us to get a better idea of planning, and that way we can start to share more with the, um, the levy committee and those folks in leadership, um, what, do, what is it looking like? I know there's, is it next calendar year? Is it 2020? Is it? Could you share with us when's the first time we can be able to go? We can put it on the ballot um, this November. November the first But it expires time. at the end of December 2021. So it can go on in November. We have three tries at it, correct? Three chances next year. And all of them are coming to a head at the same time? Correct. All three of them. Okay. So is that, that's just one? Initiative, though, correct? Mm -hmm. It's three levies, but they were combined, combined into the one. one. Right. Yep. Okay. Can you tell me when the bond, the bond issue is going off the village? Um, that I'd have to check. Okay. Yeah. I've been wondering about that because if it's 20 years and it was 201, 
I'm knocking at the door, huh? So that'll okay. be that relief. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Good. Again, because I know it's important to us that we time these so they um, don't hit our community all suddenly. Um, and it's difficult to pass things and keep going back to back to back. Um, so you say 2021 is when it expires? Correct. In which is that spring of 2021? December. December of 2021. So one of the things I think we would have to look at, knowing that November is a presidential election year, I guess we would really have to do some research to see um, <clears throat> Are we looking to go on in November, or are we just going to wait to the spring? And maybe that's some discussions we could start to have around with our levy committee. So, because we're pretty sure we wouldn't be going on this November. So that gives, I mean. Are you pretty sure of that? Because we have another November, correct? Not, we have November of 21, not just November of 20. But right. we can do it this November. Right. We can, right. We can go so, on as soon as this so November. So we could go November 20. We could go December 20. Mm -hmm. We could, no, not December, March. Whatever the primary is. Right, yes. the primary. And then coming in 21, we would also have November, November and the spring. No, we only get three shots, I think, on a renewal. <clears throat> so it's either, yeah. November, spring, or November. Right. So, I and mean, we just have to. Yeah, that, yeah, it's that tough thing is when we wait to that November, <laughs> one shot, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a. Uh, any other, anything else? And then that? the next question um, through Tia is when would, um, based on our five-year forecast, mm -hmm. um, when are we looking at the absolute latest that we could look at? Because I know new money is on the horizon. Mm -hmm. It's not negotiable. We've got to do something. When would we be looking at that? I believe it's at the end of 21 that we need to, that we start to go on the red that we need the money okay. for. Is that assuming a passage of the renewals? Yes. That's assuming the passage of the three renewals, and we're still in the red in two years, three years. Three years. Okay. So perhaps um, at some near future meeting, and I mean, Josh might be able to assist you with this since we have him on retainer in that regard, mm -hmm. um, is prepare some kind of presentation that shows us what these financials look like. Of course, we, we optimistically hope that the renewal passes, but we sometimes we need to see what happens if it doesn't. Um, that's sometimes motivation for folks um, that if this doesn't happen, then this is the consequence. Um, and, uh, and then even to the point of um, based on assumed passage of renewals, what kind of millage we need to be looking at for the new money. And there is always that what we need versus what we believe our community can give us. I think, Bill, the last time we passed the new money. Yeah, we wanted five. We needed six mills, and we asked for three one because. Yeah. Yeah. We passed what we thought we could get past. Because we tried numerous times to pass what we needed yeah. with no success. So all those things come to mind as we try and figure out when and how much and uh, so thank you. Okay. Anything else from the good of the order, guys? Um, nothing from the CEO. No committee reports. Basketball on Thursday. Wednesday. Or Wednesday? Is it Wednesday? Wednesday. 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 I got to miss church again. <laughs> <laughs> Have our second hearing of the public, please. Is there anything else from the public? A um, couple questions uh, or statements regarding the monies. Um, the proposal for the new CEO, um, I would just again like to encourage um, that the board and ADC work together so we don't have to spend the $25,000. It seemed like it worked out well for us with Mr. Ring and we um, encourage you guys to try to do that again. Um, also, I wonder if there's something you guys can put together to show the public the cuts that you guys are making or um, steps that you're taking with the money, like going over contracts, looking at, um, uh, you know, all of the changes in the leadership, um, and then maybe you'll get more community buy-in to say this is the steps that we're taking to be, you know, careful. Um, money, the prom to dawn, um, we'll have a bake sale on Wednesday. Uh, from 6 to 7.30, we have a Mama Joe's pie sale and an online fundraiser, so please donate. Thanks. 
Thank you. Anything further from the public? We have an ADC update or anything going on interesting with in oh, your world? It's quiet on the Western Front at the moment. Everything's quiet. So. Okay. Okay. And you, we don't need to go in executive session. Anything with you? We're all good? Yeah, we're good. We're good? Okay. We're good. Just wanted to make sure I didn't miss anything. Yes, so, I mean, next thing is when's our next meeting? March 23rd. March 20th. Our next meeting will be here March 23rd, 5 o'clock here in the Media Center. And hearing nothing further, I need a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Support. Support. Roll call. Uh, Ms. Nazario? Yes. Mr. Williams? Yes. Mr. Ballard? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. And Mr. Sergio? Yes. Meeting is adjourned. This has been a production of Lorraine City Schools TV20 WLCS.